Hell being fit. Well, everybody, good afternoon. Welcome to the rectory ground. Welcome to Gisborne. Sunny Gisborne. It's a little overcast. Yes, it's cloudy. But there's no rain at the moment. Match referee for today's big first 15 game is Mark Johnson. Come here especially all the way from Hawke's Bay. In shot there, Gisborne Boys High School players. A very proud bunch they are. That's the lineup today for Gisborne Boys High School to be led by Carlos Hehe, his regular co-captain, that is Nathaniel Hoherty, on the injured list today. Watch also for his younger brother, Puna Hehe, the second 5'8". He can run, he can tackle, and man, can he make yards in the tackle. Fetu McGee, the tight end prop forward, scored a wonderful try in the last home game here against New Plymouth Boys High School. This Gisborne Boys High School team is ready to rock. On the right wing, Taimana Tenati, look at them here. This historic rectory ground, this ground where the world champions played in 1994. It's a, well, it's a tight-knit group. In the middle there is our Punahihi. He will lead the Haka, Gisborne Boys and St. Peter's. Our friends from Auckland, from the Queen City, and the Haka for you in just a moment. So a mighty challenge there from Gisborne Boys High School. And I tell you what, in mentioning that 1994, look at these guys here. This is the best team in Auckland. Some say the best in the country. These guys have won eight from eight. Lua Manuvai, captain of the team, the number one team in the A1 comp. And that is the haka from the best of the best in St. Peter's. Tell you what, it's an exciting time here at the Rectory. We've had three weeks without rugby, three weeks starved of the national game. And now we are back. Mark Johnson in the middle of the maelstrom, the cauldron. That is the Rectory. It's in very good condition. You know, when you consider the rain that we've had, when you consider the water, it's in good nick. St. Peter's will play from left to right in the blue and gold. And Gisborne Boys in the black and the red from right to left. Gisborne Boys High School with a point to prove. They haven't got a Super 8 win yet. They haven't won a Super 8 game yet, but they have played some very good rugby and they have won games down at ground level with Rangai. Man, these are super shots. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward over the years to seeing games covered this way here. It's... It's very different to sitting on a, on a one-line scaffold 
on a rainy day. Gisborne boys, Carlos Hehe, the magician, Mr. Magic Carlos, from right to left, Gisborne boys will kick off. Real thrill here. A feeling that Gisborne are up for this game. Mind you, to be honest, they've been up for every game they've played. Just a matter of hanging on in the second half, I suppose. Carlos Hehe, right foot kicker, round the corner style kicker, goes long. St. Peter's to receive. You watch for these big forwards of St. Peter's. Watch for Blair, the big number eight. Dylan Pattaya, the open side flanker. Here's halfbacker uh, Fukafuka. There in uh, close support was Pattaya. Gisborne boys will set the first scrum. These are wonderful pictures. Dylan Bronland. Dylan Bronland, vice captain, blindside flanker. That ruddy head of hair. And those orange boots, mind you, those boots won't stay orange for long. Not here at the rectory on this wet day. The shot from up top. This is probably the best ground atmosphere-wise in the country for first 15 football on a good day. And something tells me that today is the day. Look at that. I love the way he spins the ball on his finger there is Ralph Fox. Magnificent. First minute of play. One error so far. And the short arm penalty there to St. Peter's. They didn't reset the scrum. Mark Johnson. I tell you what, thank you very much to Hawke's Bay for sending a referee, and especially one of Johnson's calibre. Not any old riffraff. That's uh, Fuka Fuka with a boot to ball. Nicely underneath that there, Luca Russell did well. Gisborne boys, Maxwell. Over to Hehe, a long kick. It's a lovely kick by Hehe. Good gain in ground. St. Peter's, they'll look to put boot to ball. This is Hehe again on the sideline. Long drive. So this is the duel at the start of the game. Gisborne boys come up to put pressure on a kicker. St. Peter's this time, ball in hand. Gisborne boys make their tackle. Wow, St. Peter's, the number one team in Auckland. City of over a million people. And St. Peter's with a good start out wide. Nicely in the hands of Bent there, the blindside flanker. Slipped on the turf. It is a little oily. And that's a good tackle. And it was McGee. Nice tackle there by McGee. Gisborne boys make tackles. These guys are going to come and come hard, playing under advantage. Over halfway. St. Peter's ball in hand. Fuka Fuka. And St. Peter's straight away finding one or two gaps and bursting through tackles. And St. Peter's with the opening try, a little too easy. Presley Shamanu would try there, the opening try for St. Peter's 5-0. Presley with a good try, good support play. Kept the ball alive. Nice touches there by St. Peter's. But perhaps a tackle or two could have been made. Nice start though by Presley Shamanu. And St. Peter's showing that they want to play the rugby. Running rugby, keeping the ball in hand. They should be commended for that. Despite the conditions, looking to play bright, positive rugby. 5-0 St. Peter's, Presley the first try. He was on hand, stumbled a little. St. Peter's came here today with a full complement. That is all four teams that turn out in these fixtures against Gisborne boys. And what a marvelous opportunity for a young rugby player this fixture is. Look at Foka. The scores to date, we have to hand Gisborne boys seconds. 14, St. Peter's 12, the under 15s, beaten by St. Peter's, 12 0. And St. Peter's under 14s running out winners there, 20 to 12. Scores to hand, so 7 0, St. Peter's up by seven in the first four minutes. Sometimes it can take a second to get your bearings, but you don't want to start off too slowly. Gisborne forwards, some big units, Joe Kemp amongst them. Trudging up to uh, halfway. St. Peter's with a nice start. 7 0. Lovely try to Presley. So, Manu Gisborne boys again restart. The first restart they took it was a long kick. Fifth minute of play. Restart, Carlos Sihi. St. Peter's, you can expect them to play clever rugby, smart rugby, with a good understanding of angles an appreciation of the space. Joe Kemp for Gisborne boys at the front of their line out there in four, just turned around. Throw to come in a moment. We have Nathaniel Niwa Karakia. He is the hooker forward today. 
Kemp won a lot of line-out ball and some against the throw in the last home game here against New Plymouth Boys. That's uh, Joe Kemp. Well, he didn't get up really, Joe. Didn't really get up. But won the ball anyway. Carlos Ehe. Ball in hand, Gisborne boys. They've just lost the ball forward. That was Ruben Faitere. Now on the counter-attack, St. Peter's. Gisborne boys were penalised at a scrum that led to the first St. Peter's try and they're losing the ball forward, unfortunately. So Gisborne boys and St. Peter's have started off at a hot pace for the visitors. Good shoulder there in the shot. Standing over the ball there, Big Blair. Tangi for Maunau. Nice pass a moment ago from uh, Fuka Fuka. St. Peter's with a bright start now. They're penalised. That's the first penalty that they've conceded. Gisborne boys receive their first penalty inside their own half. Around about uh, 20 metres on their own side of halfway. Gisborne boys down at the moment by seven points. Lovely try, Presley Sumanu. Sometimes it can seem almost too good to be true. That may be the way that Presley felt just before he scored that try. 7-0, the rectory, the sun's come out. Sun's out, guns out, as they say. Speaking of which, Dylan Bronlin makes his way to the line-out. Watch for Bronlin. Kemp is the tallest of the Gisborne boys forwards. He wins the line-out. That's the second one he's won. Carlos Hehe, now Ruben Faitari in the midfield. Strong, direct carry to halfway. Clear by Fox. Gisborne boys want to play the game at pace. Boot to ball there a moment ago from uh, Punahi. Don't often see that from Puna. <coughs> Penalty awarded to St. Peter's. Okay, call there is a highest tackle by Mark Johnson. These guys should be very confident out there. They're in the hands of an expert referee. And that's a wonderful thing. Clearing kick to come from... Uh, Fuka Fuka. Converted the try score by Presley. Over that big touch. Big boot. Great kick. Got him to halfway. McGee again. Kemp has won the first two line outs of the game. Throw to come from Caden. Two fighty. Strong hooker with a big reputation, well-deserved reputation. Line out one by Blair, playing well. Gisborne boys with a tackle up on Napole. Zika Pole, his first carry. Nice pass a moment ago from uh, Crudini, the captain. St. Peter's are positive. They're probing at the moment. Dylan Brondon forward to make the tackle. Brondon there, nice tackle. Brondon, a good defender, one-on-one -on -one and energetic. Some would say mad. Gisborne boys there, ball on the floor. And looking for the pickup. It's a little scrappy at the moment, Gisborne St. Peter's. Lacking a little shape. But hey, what shape between friends? 7 0. Charge down there by Ruben. 5 3. St. Peter's have it. Everybody was on side. And there to make the clearing pass, Presley. Uh, St. Peter's becoming a little scrappy themselves over there on the left. But they break now. And this is good stuff. Brilliant stuff. Boot to ball by Jago Burley. At the moment, at the moment, 7 0. And St. Peter's have started excellently. Another great try. It's Charlie Bent. And to be honest, the quality of their support play at the moment is very, very good from St. Peter's. There's always someone there to take that last pass. And that's what you saw from Charlie Bent. He who works hard is rewarded. Charlie Bent. His name is Toil. It's a lovely try. And now 12-0. Gisborne boys down at the moment. A couple of tries. First one to Presley Somanu and the second a moment ago to Charlie Bent. That's a reward for hard work. 12 0. It's Rate Fukufuka, vice captain. Kicking from around about, oh, say about uh, 10 off the far touch. Well, we've got a moment to uh, compliment the Gisborne Boys High School second 15. 14-12, a hard-fought victory. Under 15s. As I said, went to St. Peter's 12-0. Under 14s, battled 20-12. To, <laughs> to St. Peter's, Etuate Fukufuka, a young man with a big future in the game. Puts good boot to ball. Has a shot up in the air, and that's 14-0. 
So P St Peter's with a 14 point lead and about uh, 10 minutes into the game. And this game has started with two splendid tries to the visitors. It's a, you know, to be honest, the weather has improved greatly in the last hour and a half. My people tell me that uh, when they got here, it was pouring. I refuse to believe it. But anyway, <laughs> certainly both teams can play running rugby now. So far, one of them has. The other has yet to really open their eyes yet. 11 minutes into the first half. OK, that's a Ruben fight. I think that's the second time he's charged to kick down. Ball on the touchline. Last touch was Gisborne boys. Great atmosphere here. Caden to throw. Saw a great win at the line out, Blair. Tangifui Mao now. Caden. Caden to throw. Taking a little while to get the ball in. But a good win. It was Blair again. He's won a couple. Done well in that area, in that department. At the moment, 14 0. Two converted tries to St. Peter's. There's boys looking to hold them in their own half. Haven't really seen anything in uh, St. Peter's half. Now, uh, King Maxwell, who scored an incredible try against uh, New Plymouth Boys High School here on another great run. Turned the ball back uh, over, actually. They passed back inside, but it was picked off by Caden Tuifaiti. And so St. Peter's hooker able to start up that counter attack. Ball held there by Louis Kishimoto. It was marked by Carlos. That's a nice pass there by Burley. And support Blair again. Tangi Pamohono having a really good start. There's a wall. Well, I was going to say intercept Bronlin of all things. Bronlin coming through. Bronlin there. It was there in his hands for a moment. And then it was gone. Bronlin. He'll be kicking himself, Bronlin. Now in the 13th minute of play, this is a place, the rectory, where dreams can come true. Remember an incredible game a few years ago now, Tauranga Boys College. Only needed to kick a penalty goal, opted not to take the shot, went for the try instead. First knock on against the Gisborne team. St. Peter's bringing all four teams here. I think that's magnificent. One of the few fixtures Gisborne boys play with four teams involved. Look at Bronlin. He's ready to back up because he wants to make the tackle. That's the reason that he's backing up. Wants to make the next big hit. Really, from, a, from the home team's perspective, the first big hit. Settle for a ball and all tackle. Look at Mark out there. Slaving away, Mark Johnson. Tell you what, pulling your sprigs out of the mud, it's not easy. And he has actually shifted the scrum, which is very good from the point of view of player safety. Players are unable to gain a foothold. It is dangerous to pack a scrum, said scrum. Bronden looking around to his backs, talking to uh, Russell, I think it is, over here on this near side. Make a tackle on the blind side, like the Louis Kishimoto for a moment. First five, a second to go for St. Peter's. Came in and was involved. OK, another short arm penalty there. Goes against Gisborne boys. Fetu McGee picked up there by referee Johnson. The front rows dipped. He had a word. He'd shifted them, of course, from the original point that had been set for the scrum. This is some great rugby. They find good touch too, St. Peter's. They've got good boots to put the ball. Last year, of course, Gisborne was swept in this fixture. St. Peter's won 56 0 in the first 15, the seconds 55 0, the under 15s 52 to 0. The under 14s beat the Gisborne boys 30 to 20. So the little chaps were fierce competitors last year and very competitive this year. Throw to come from Caden. Caden with a long throw. They've got uh, some great line out forwards. St. Peter's, Charlie Bent. On that last line out, scored a try. Good try by Bent too early in the game. 
Second try after Somanu. Two tries to St. Peter's, who now are showing control in the rolling mall. The line-out drive from St. Peter's, it takes skill, takes craft, that line-out drive. St. Peter's ball in hand, not afraid to truck it up. That's Presley Sumanu, who scored the opening try of the game. St. Peter's, there's the big guy with the triple shuffle there. That was Polo. I've seen him touch the ball once. Well, once before. The ball now in the hands of uh, Dylan Pattaya. Play by Pattaya. Gisborne boys trying to bring him down. Everybody's on side at the moment. It's uh, the big tight head, the captain. Kurini Lua Manuvai. Penalty St. Peter's. On the arm goes straight up. Gisborne boys are going to have to react quickly. They've already conceded two tries. St. Peter's have looked classy. But from time to time, you've got to make that first up tackle. St. Peter's finding touch. St. Peter's look in terms of playing style, a lot like what I'd imagined. Clean, clinical. Kurini, Lua Manuvai, squatting there. That's a nice catch. That was Blair Tangi for my or not. Drive here from St. Peter's. The drive is on. Ball is at the back of this rolling mall. And they have it down there. So St. Peter's done very well. Their third try, Caden. Caden to a fighty. So they're now 19-0. Caden to a fighty with an excellent try. And you know, that was from the line-out drive. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it takes many hours to perfect that. The timing, the coordination, when to thrust. And Caden Tuifaiti there with a try. Their third, 19-0. So far, it's been all St. Peter's. Gisborne boys haven't, they haven't had any ball. They haven't had enough ball to know exactly what they could do with it. 19-0. This from nearer the touchline. Struck a couple pretty well. Fuka Fuka. 19-0, 18th minute. It is an overcast day here. Man, with these guys, with the gunk on their numbers, it's not always easy to tell who's who. That's, uh, well, forget about gunk on their numbers, making a difference there. Dylan Pattaya, OK. It wasn't easy to pick up who it was, taking the kicks at goal. Pattaya there, covered in mud, mud and glory. Well, that's the only way to describe it. 21-0. <coughs> 18th minute. Pattaya there slipped a Minty's moment, but converted. 21-0. Apologies to Dylan. He took and made those uh, conversions. That's Bronlin there. Looking for Gisborne Boy's third charge down of the game. That was uh, Luca Russell. Was always going to be a tight thing. Arguably, that was heading out on the full. And now it's going to be a St. Peter's throw. Their line out has been critical to date. Caden Tuifaiti has uh, found both Blair and Charlie Bent. Caden. Okay, he managed to drag that down St. Peter's. It was uh, scruffy. That is uh, really scruffy. There's Joe Kemp running into Bronlin. What was Bronlin doing? What, what was Kemp doing? What were they doing? The moment 21-0. Good fun. Boy, oh boy. 21 0. Touch found by Carlos. Big touch. Now, Gisborne boys with an opportunity to, as they say, mount some offense. Fetu McGee, he's on the prowl. McGee up there to the front of the line out. Now, Gisborne boys have been running a pretty good line out recently with Bronlin and Kemp. Kemp 6 6. About 6'5", 6'6". 
Bronlin around about 6-2-6-3. Throw to come. Nathaniel, okay, one against the throw by St. Peter's. They're in touch. Well, he had a forehead on the sideline. Forehead doesn't count. Okay, that's uh, Kemp making the tackle. Gisborne boys and St. Peter's. 21-0, three converted tries. Okay, Bronlin there with a the charge down. Bronlin. That was more a case of the ball hitting him than him going out to it. Bronlin there with a disgusted look in the direction of referee Johnson. Joe Kemp. He saunders back now. A penalty there. Carlos here. He just having a word. Referee Johnson. I must be seeing things. I thought for a moment I saw a St. Peter's player is his forehead. There on the uh, there on the sideline. Just the top of the head there. Yes. The external occipital protuberance area. 21 0. Look for touch. Man, these guys are finding some great touch. Both teams, to be honest. Carlos Hihi clearing to good effect earlier. Throw to come from Caden. Now has established Blair. Tangi Fu Mauno and uh, Charlie Bent as the two principal line-out forwards. No doubt they've got more than two options. Hard to go past those two, though. Look at the big guy, Kurini Luamanuvai, squatting there. It's that extreme strength in the quads. Tight head prop forward, scrum anchor. This line out is taking an age to, uh, to be held. I wonder if it's disconcerting for the Gisborne forwards the way that the St. Peter's captain is squatting there. Gargoyle light. And once again, St. Peter's win their own line out ball. And do well. Kishimoto there with a pass in front. Uh, Came forward, did uh, Polo, and now Burley again. Burley's got pace from the back, the full back. He is a speedster. Boot to ball. Gisborne boys got back in defence and cover. Did well there. That looks to be, uh, is that Luca Russell? Do my eyes deceive me? Braith Ingram on hand. It's Carlos here. Ball may have touched a St. Peter's player in flight. And they've got great hands considering the conditions. Wet conditions. Ball over to Blair, who comes off the right foot, right again. Punahihi comes at him. Here's the big guy, Pole. He's enjoying this a, mo a moment in the sun that's running around. Minus the sun, that is. 21 0. Three converted tries. Kishimoto in there like a flash to clear. Kishimoto getting that pass away. Put the fuck up. Okay, good hands, lovely hands. Caden to a fighty. Lovely last pass from Caden to a fighty. And Quincy Penesio scores the fourth try for St. Peter's. Lovely last pass, Quincy. The finish in the corner, three converted tries. They keep the ball alive, St. Peter's. They keep the ball alive, they pass well, they back up. And that's why they've scored four tries. Can they convert four? This has been a brilliant start by the visitors. No doubt about that. Literally, I cannot imagine a better start. Ituate, Fuka Fuka. Etuate, who slipped on the turf the last attempt he took. Mind you, who cares if you make the shot? 26-0, four tries, three conversions. From five metres off the touchline. Couple. OK, another good-looking kick. Man, that kick looks good. Has he got it or not? Well, I saw a flag go up. I saw another one go halfway up. Then I saw a dip. So the flag's dipped here, 28-0 in the 25th minute. It's a mountain to climb. It's not quite Everest, but uh, St. Peter's, they are firing. On, they have all guns blazing at the moment. There's no question about it. They've scored four tries. They've converted all four. Gisborne boys need to get the ball and do something with it. Haven't really seen any enterprise from them in the attacking half because they haven't had the ball. 
Restarted play from Carlos Hehe. It's a nice catch. We've got some players who work hard, you know, the likes of uh, Blair and Charlie Bent, those two back row forwards, principally so far in the game. <coughs> St. Peter's with industry. <coughs> There'll always be a time to roll your sleeves up. St. Peter's up 28-0. And Joe Kemp, Dylan Brondon, the charge down crew, wanting to get involved again. That was King Maxwell with a catch. Luca Russell. Now uh, Carlos Hee with a step, which is negated to a degree by this soft surface. OK, and Gisborne boys have got it. They've just taken straight off. That's King Maxwell. Scored a try off a kick and chase the last time he was here. Now after Jago Burley. Jago slipped. I'm not sure if he got the kick in before he slipped or if he slipped and got the kick in. OK, that was, a, that was a tough pass by Ty Mana, but they've kept it alive. They've kept it alive. Bronlin the open side. Bronlin wearing the six. Gisborne boys with ball in the attack and half. And a good hearty charge there from Petu McGee. His first real charge at the line. Gisborne boys. Now their body position is good as they carry the ball up. Box. Hands, hands, hands. Now King Maxwell. Hands. Now Bronlin. Bronlin's inventive. Russell. He's got a kick here. Very good kick. Good kick there by uh, Luca Russell. Trying to get hands on Jago. Jago escapes. No, it's a matter. Yes, he does. St. Peter's up at the moment by 28 points. 28 to nil. Gisborne boys. Sometimes they're going in to make the tackle and they're slippery. They're slipping on this uh, oily Take surface. Him back. Take him back. OK, Take that's Kishimoto with ball, with boot to ball. Ball back into his own 22. And that was the uh, call. One of Gisborne Boys' assistant, uh, assistant coaches down on the sideline, Mark Jefferson. And he was quite right. 28-0. Gisborne Boys with some uh, good enterprise earlier. Saw King Maxwell look dangerous. He's looked dangerous in every game he's played, to be honest, this season. No doubt that if you make a mistake and he's around Maxwell, he'll take advantage. St. Peter's, though, don't look like a team that's going to make many mistakes. You don't win eight from eight in the A1 comp in Auckland making mistakes. And that there was one against the throw by Blair, Tony Fumano. They come hard at the tacklers and they break one or two tackles. One of Gisborne Boys players is down. He might have hurt his shoulder making the tackle. It's McGee. Here bouncing. It's going to take a lot to hurt McGee. It's not McGee that's down on the floor at the moment. It might actually uh, be Kaya Gate. I think it is Kaya. It was a Carlos Ehe making the tackle in recovering. No whistle or advantage being played here by referee Johnson. It's just normal rugby play on. OK, nice hands there from Luca Russell away from Jaco Burley. Russell athletically, tall boy, took a hard hit. Awkward, might have been hit on the arm there. That can be very painful of itself. That's a Joe Kemp, huge boy, hard to miss. Down his Kaya Gate, and he did take a knock. I'll tell you when that happened. He was coming in to make a tackle earlier. Might have got that on the point of the shoulder. Now, the hip is the hardest part of the body, but the shoulder, sometimes you can be hit and hurt, and that can take the starch out of you. Kyagate on his back at the moment. He won't stay down for long, not if he can help it. Not if at all humanly possible. Wipes his face, gets back to it. Rugby players will always be like that. You can talk to them about injury and, hey, your health comes first, but a lot of them, they just won't hear that. They will want to play. <laughs> Braith Ingram, open side flanker, solid little fella. Still have uh, one of our trainers on the field. Like a, a change for injury, obviously. Look at Dylan Bronlin. Imagining winning that next line-out if a line-out comes. Bronlin's done well at the line-out, so has Kemp. Ingram has been used as a line-out option before. He's lighter and easy to lift. Get him up on that basis. That's Johnson having a word with Gisborne boys and now makes a point for the scrum. Big guys, Pole versus McGee, Goudini versus Zeke Collier. Get a very good feeling too between these teams. 
on what is grand final day here in Gisborne. Half an hour into the game. 30 minutes into the first half, 35 minutes each way. There's Rough Ox, feeds the scrum. Good Gisborne scrum. Put under pressure but held up well. That's Punahihi, uncomplicated. Good strong run from here a moment ago. Gisborne boys with a few powerful carries up their sleeves. Here's uh, he he away to Maxwell. Maxwell wisely holds on to the ball, doesn't throw the 50-50 pass. Fox, another good pass away a moment ago and Gisborne boys on the run hard now. This is good rugby from Gisborne boys, probing away on the right. Braith Ingram, an adventurer, just like his dad, the same sort of player, same tough number. Joe Kemp got to get low. When you carry the ball, you got to get low. That's what Joe did, low as you can go. Here uh, is McGee again, McGee, McGee, bouncing around. McGee, still good Gisborne ball. Punahi will run hard. Gisborne boys through the midfield, Bronlin got it. Got a good pass actually from Xavier to a power. And now it's with St. Peter's, will counter-attack immediately. And now they're in touch. Tell you what, St. Peter's, the minute that you make a mistake, you turn the ball over, you drop the ball, however it happens, they're right on it. Jago Burley, very slight the fullback. Call there made by referee Johnson, who's had a good game so far, I think. Good control, well respected by the players, rightly so. We are in the 32nd minute. Now, of all things, believe it or not, it's become a warm day. <laughs> Gisborne boys and St. Peter's. St. Peter's with a good start, 28-0. Four converted tries. And able to run and make good yards. Okay, the call for the second time in this game is a high tackle made by referee Johnson. Israel Fox. Sometimes it can be a hard area to referee to police in contact these days, because players are taught they're encouraged to dip in the tackle. Of course, if they dip in the tackle, they are at more risk. It's rectory crowd, known as the faithful, nationwide. Gisborne Boys, an institution in its 130th year. I can't believe, to be honest, that it's been 13 years since the centenary. It, it seems like just yesterday. Just about half time here. St. Peter's up, uh, and that's a lovely catch by Luca Russell, wants the mark. What a great catch there by Luca Russell. Magnificent, going back on the turn over the shoulder. That's a real Hollywood catch there from uh, Luca Russell. He'll now uh, kick for line, seemingly. We'll know it's uh, around about 15 metres in field. It's where they've got it. St. Peter's again. Pole. St. Peter's probing, looking good. The best of the best, and they recover. The, the rest of New Zealand really has the rest. I'm telling you that now. They are very, very good. There's no question about it. 28 0. 34th minute, as we have it. Now, uh, fair to McGee. I'm not sure if that was a dummy or what. McGee, Gisborne boys on their own side of halfway, having to work hard here. Going to have to fight for every inch here against uh, St. Peter's. Their uh, tackling is sure and sound. Gisborne boys able to roll up to halfway. Okay, here in the 35th minute. Maxwell again. Maxwell looks to keep the ball alive. Penalty now, St. Peter's. Gisborne boys 
would not release the ball. Penalty issued there by referee Johnson. Referee Johnson has struck the right tone here as a referee. He's got a sense of humour, but he's in control. He's very clear. He's plainly a very good operator. Smooth operator. Mark Johnson. 28-0. St. Peter's have been outstanding. I was just thinking how ironic would it have been there if the referee had blown the whistle for half time. 35 minutes up. That's not how it works. I'll do that on a penalty, Caden to Fighty. Okay, we've got a Blair at the front at two. May actually dip back. Yes, they go to the middle. That's Bronlin there against the throw. Win against the throw by Bronlin. So a good play there by Bronlin. First time, Brisbane boys have won a line out against the throw. That's a Carlos Hihi with boot to ball. And at the moment, 28-0. That's Hihi. Took that just outside the 22. Has been driven back into the 22. That's fine. Of course, can't take the kick directly for touch. That situation is uh, Fetu McGee taken hard there. Good tackle. I believe it was a Pattaya. So a good tackle there on uh, McGee. He looks very fluffy, McGee. Here now is uh, Carlos Ihi with boot to ball. Does he find touch? Carlos finds touch. That's what they needed him to do, but St. Peter's have started very, very quickly. 28-0. Man, they've been impressive. And they are impressive. Here's Kishimoto, and Louis Kishimoto escapes Bronlin. The clutches of Bronland and scores now. Well, that's 33-0. Tell you what, he was having to evade Bronland. 33-0, conversion attempt to come. Kishimoto. I am impressed. <coughs> 33-0, Kishimoto, Johnson there. Well, what a day out. Five converted tries. That's what it would be here if he can land the conversion. Fuka Fuka. 33 nil this for 35. This has been a magnificent first half of rugby from St. Peter's College. They have played extremely well and are worth every point of the lead. And none of the points they've scored have been anything to do with something that's been missed by officials or a refereeing decision. 33 points on the board because they are that good. Gisborne boys have looked promising and when they've had the ball in their hands, they've looked likely. But it's like sand in the hourglass. Just haven't had enough. And now 35 nil. St. Peter's at half time, leading by 35 points to nil. Just a quick mention of those other scores for you again. Gisborne boys winning the second 15 engagement 14-12. St. Peter's under 15s winning that match 12-0. And Gisborne boys under 14s, we believe 20 to 12. So the little guys put up a real fight. So did the under 15s and the seconds came across for them. That's outstanding stuff.
Gisborne Boys High School versus St. Peter's. And this is, this is going to be a real character indication the second half. Because when you're down 35-0, there's only one way to go. Well, no, as a matter of fact, there are two ways. But Gisborne Boys are going to look to fight back 35-0. They know that they're better than that. They are better than that. They have great tries in them. They've got a first five in terms of skills, individual skills, the second to none, Carlos Hihi. Kishimoto, I remind you, scored the last try of the first half of play. And St. Peter's restart. They go short, Gisman went long, and St. Peter's win the restart. They have been impressive. Kishimoto making the last pass. And that was uh, Fetu McGee landing on top of him. Okay, Punahihi there trying to make the tackle. They're slippery, these guys, St. Peter's. They're slippery red wet. And they did have a little bit of moisture out there earlier on. Kishimoto coming back in. He's a brave little fella. Little meets big. St. Peter's probing away on that right side. Punahihi in there. He's as strong as any front row, as strong as, in, strong as any forward. St. Peter's try to sell a dummy. They're around about 10 metres into Gisborne's half. Leading at the moment, 35-0. They've made another good start, trying to bust through tackles. Trying to break tackles. 35-0, you don't surrender in the tackle. Kishimoto back on the inside. Wow, was that to Burley. Landing on a Gisborne player with knees, entirely accidental. Small incident in this game. Tackle there made on Presley, I think. Presley, who scored the opening try, the second five-eighths for St. Peter's with boot to ball and very good kicks. That's uh, King Maxwell, who may have kicked it away there into the hands of the opposition. Quincy Penasio, I think. He scored a marvellous try too. Way wide out, and St. Peter's, well, haven't they made the greatest start imaginable? If that's Pole, that is a marvellous start from St. Peter's. It's a bit hard to tell to get a juicy number here. Yes, it was, Sika Pole. So he has scored a very good try. He has gotten around, and he has been rewarded also. These guys are active. The tight five, the ball skills, the individual skills are very, very good. Now 40 to nil. And came around to improve the angle for the kick to be taken by Fuka Fuka. 40 to nil. It is a big scoreline. However, this sort of scoreline, this sort of adversity, you know, it, it can be a good thing if it drives you to excel. 40 to nil. For 42 here, Fuka Fuka. 40 to nil. <laughs> 40 to nil. Fuka Fuka there at the ball very well. 42 points to nil. 42 points to nil. 43 minutes. Wow. Eight minutes into this uh, second half of play. 42 to nil. Last year, first 15 match was 56 to nil to St. Peter's. Holders of the Torrey Sriage Cup. 44th minute. Gisborne have got to get on the board and soon. Got to get on the board and fast, quickly. 44th minute of play. Mark Johnson. Gisborne boys to restart. Don't want anyone in front of Carlos, not if you're a Gisborne fan. He he. With boot to ball. Well organised St. Peter's too. And now break from the restart. Man, are they playing well or what, St. Peter's? The Aucklanders are playing magnificent rugby. They're the best team in the Auckland comp. They have come here to show their wares. Lost the ball there. <coughs> St. Peter's lost the ball forward. But are they impressive or dangerous there from the restart? Big guy Robson. Faliafa out there now in 17. Also out there in 19, Nick Malifa. 
Very impressed by Bent, try scorer Bent on the side, blindside flanker. He and Blair covered themselves in glory. Sikapolo had to be found a scrum. Who said prop forward? He'd wandered out near the backs. Look at that, Bronlin smacking him, slapping him. Wants a big push out of McGee. There's been scrum feed. Here's Ralph Fox. Feed the scrum. Okay. Now, referee Johnson has zero tolerance. Over on this side of the scrum now, and that, you know, that's a real sharp cookie. Ball's going to be put in from the other side, but referee Johnson has determined that he needs to keep an eye on what's happening here. And so he has come onto this side of the scrum. Just the little things the casual observer might miss. Here's Ralph Fox. I think he's had a good season. He's passed the ball beautifully. His service has been very good. This pass is only going to get stronger over the years, too. OK, Brisbane boys attacking on the right. That's Carlos Hehe who runs, steps back in. And that was Blair that got to him. Brisbane boys want the ball. They don't want to turn over here. And it's loose ball on the ground. Penalty, Brisbane boys. Watered by referee Johnson. And Gisborne boys have the penalty. Look for touch. That's what they should do. This is Carlos Hehe. And he has got to find touch and do the good and do the uh, do the important things as well as he can. One of the great things about, of course, having a job like mine and a role like mine is that you get a chance to describe the players, and the truth of it is they are entertaining. Ben Phelps out there, he's now out there, and I'll tell you what, there's no player with a bigger heart. It's just come on for Gisborne boys. Joe Kemp takes a break, he's to the sideline. Tallest player for Gisborne at six foot five. Played a good, honest game again, but they've got to win the line out, and they've got to win good ball. It's going to be Bronlin, I'm sure of it. Bronlin in the middle of the line out. Okay, Gisborne boys have called in another forward, so it's a four man line out. Nathaniel Niwakarakia. Will it be Bronlin? Looks like Bronland. It, well, that was meant to be Bronland. It was meant to be Bronland. Gisborne boys have the ball again and busting hard. See you. Gisborne boys at the moment, 42 nil. That's it. Well, that was uh, Carlos Hehe with a nice catch. Did well there, Carlos. Or rather, his. Uh, well, that's a boot from Carlos into the head of a St. Peter's player. Offside is the ruling there from referee Johnson. Forty-eight minutes gone in the game. Remember, thirty-five minutes each way. Bronland thinking about what his next move will be. They'll pack a scrum. Gisborne boys scrum has held up well today. A couple of occasions early in the game, referee Johnson. So having a close look at Fetu McGee, but he's scrummaged really, really well ever since. Braith Ingram on his side. It is a contest, the scrum, the front row. If you cannot win your own ball there, then you cannot win the game. At the moment, actually winning the game is not high on the home team's priority list. Simply need to control the ball that they do get. And they need more of it. Scrum platform is set. At about midfield, 22. The push here from the defending team. That is the visitors. Gisborne boys running left. That's Carlos Hehe. Ball goes to ground against St. Peter's. Trying to get boot to ball. Boot to ball. Ball bouncing off head skulls. Now, it looks to me as if some of these guys haven't played an awful lot of rugby in conditions like these and under conditions like these ball security very important in retaining possession and in that sense sometimes you have to be conservative with passes shorten those passes up one or two uh, passes pushed 42 to nil at the moment one of local rugby's refereeing legends over there on the far sideline in Colin Shanks Man, what a character. And 
The 50th minute of play here. St. Peter's up 42 to nil. <laughs> An amazing start. That uh, moment ago was uh, Israel Fox. He thought he was tapping the ball and taking off, but he was nowhere near the mark. No mark had been made, mind you. Ground level, make you feel like you're part of it. Experience first 15 rugby, the most exciting rugby in the country. These young players, their future, their passion, the great unknown. 42 to nil. Fox to feed. Gisborne boys scrum holding up here against the big push from St. Peter's. And it is a big push from St. Peter's here. Haven't seen a tight end in the game, but that was the first really big push. And it is a little slippery. Oh God, and it was Israel Fox. Big push on the uh, heart. Well, on the boys I forward pack a moment ago. Ben Phelps. Rugby lover number one. Rugby boy number one. Wearing 19. 51st minute. Good crowd in. Say 600. Seven at a pinch. 42 to nil. And in reference to my comrades from uh, Rangai, they have made a fantastic effort today. And this coverage is very good. And this coverage is only going to get better in the years to come. Look at Puna, he, he plotting some devilry. Puna, look at Puna. Puna there with the centre three quarter Xavier to a power on side. Puna there with the mouth guard Xavier. He of the big legs. We return to it again. We return to it only because we're very proud of him. Second 15, man, playing great rugby. They take their example in terms of commitment, in terms of courage from these guys, the first 15, knowing that they were going up against one of the country's best teams today. View of Auckland is the best. Hamilton boys might have something to say about that. They're under pressure. Ituate, the vice captain, taking it upon himself here. Penalty now, issued by referee Johnson. And you know, what's what's been great for these young players with referee Johnson. His rulings are clear. And he doesn't debate with people. <laughs> to be honest, in the modern game, there's far too much of that. But he's very clear. They don't, they don't wonder what happened. They know what happened. What to say to Dave Thomas, who is the director of rugby and the head coach of St. Peter's, that he has done a very good job and preparing this team because this team is well organized obviously they have depth and great depth but like every school um they've had to work through these last three years <laughs> can't always have been easy getting players together to get about play travel train people involved make a great many sacrifices on in 16 is josiah kiaho there's a big boy out there in 16 for Gisborne boys in the black and red. And there is a nice catch. Isaiah, for, oh no, that was, a, Cohen was given to me in 21 actually. Cohen Loffler given to me in 21. Yes, that was the lanky Cohen. He was away from the scene. And Gisborne boys put subs on to see what they can do. Dylan Bron on the ground. Good powerful play there by Quincy Penesi, or good physical play by Quincy. Get in there, try and drive Gisborne off. Nothing wrong with that either. Very clean, hard rugby this has been today. Gisborne boys, Nathaniel. That over to Puna, now to King Maxwell. Ball in hand for Gisborne boys, and they can do well there, and that's what they should look to try and keep on doing. Gisborne boys, have, well, they've turned the ball over at the ruck, and Paul is going to be made here on a, on a, on a high tackle. As Puna, he, I think, was simply trying to rip the ball from the player who'd been tackled. As uh, players come together, as they do these days. The fur was about to fly, <laughs> referee Johnson. 
The tackle was what we would call an enveloping tackle. Carlos Sihi. Word with referee Johnson. Game has been played in an excellent spirit. Sometimes things go wrong. 55th minute of play. Tell you what, these are your real rugby fans, these fans here today. And I see a whole host of St. Peter's fans here today, and they'd be enjoying what they've seen from their team because their boys have played good rugby, scored some great tries. Gisborne boys, in terms of things they've done really well, well, I think Fetu McGee has looked very determined on the tackle. Dylan Bronland, as ever, has been committed. Bronland, I think, won a line-out against the throw for Gisborne boys, and I think he was the first line-out forward from Gisborne boys to do it against St. Peter's today. Joe Kemp ever on the improve. Nathaniel Niwa Karakia, not bad on the throw. So there have been little things they've done okay, but the big scoreboard says 42-0, and it is a big scoreboard. St. Peter's with magnificent effort, six converted tries. Six converted tries, pushing on the right side now. St. Peter's here with great control. Excellent control. Once again, we apologise for not being able to tell you who's got the ball, but it's at the front. It's with St. Peter's. And St. Peter's have not yet grounded the ball. You can see that they are short of the line here. <laughs> Peters, very close penalty now, St. Peter's. Gisborne boys can only go back as far as the goal line. Not required to go back any further than that. Ball tapped by Azil. Azil Ho. Azil to find touch. To be honest, your first priority there is not to kick the ball too far that it goes dead in goal. Make sure that it goes out within the uh, bounds of the field of play. This fixture is a magnificent fixture. And four teams have the opportunity to compete and excel. Nice win by Bent. Bent scored, I think, the second try of the game. Presley scored the first. Ball has been transferred from, well, not transferred, taken from Bent. That's our Bronlin now with a hoof. <coughs> the Bronlin hoof down the ground here in the 58th minute with the score 42 to nil. Gisborne boys, in terms of a try, they'll take it any way they can get it. And it's been demanding rugby. And this is what happens when you play really good opposition. It's tough. You don't get much. You get very few breaks. Bond and line out earlier on against the, uh, against the throw. Line out one by Lima for Fita. Nice athleticism there from Lima and good timing as well. Moment 42 nil, six converted tries. St. Peter's away on the right side in their own half. Gisborne boys hold them and drive them back. Braith Ingram ready to make a tackle. There's a kid that will never give up. Gisborne boys, got to communicate on that. This is uh, a little for a moment to be Cohen Loft. It was hard to tell he and Maxwell. There's a similarity. B2 McGee, pass over to uh, Carlos. Now to Puna. Puna there with a uh, lob pass. Xavier, I think, on the inside. Gisborne boys. Looking to make the ball do the work. Liam Beattie in the 20. Gisborne boys continuing to work hard. King Maxwell has the ball. Nice pass to Cohen Loffler. Loffler has some pace. Loffler. Did he lose the ball for? Does that play on? Okay. Gisborne boys went out. St. Peter's will throw the ball into play. Blue and gold, lovely colours. Big guy Robson, Bali Affa. Powerhouse. <laughs> Bronlin over to the line out. Time doesn't stand still. Josiah Kiaho wants a run. Memorable run, that's what he wants to make it. Okay, Bent wins the line out. Great win by Bent. That was the big guy of the past, Nick Malifa. He'd be going 6-5. 
Okay, penalty now, Gisborne. The decision made very clearly, very quickly, and decisively there by referee Johnson. Gisborne with the ball in hand. That was a Carlos Hihi with his brother in support. With his brother in support, Betty got the pass away. Gisborne still trying, trying to scratch at the door, trying to find a way through, trying to find a way home. Gisborne boys as close as they've come to scoring. Hammering on St. Peter's line here, Gisborne boys. That was Bronden, Bronden, did the ball go forward? The ball did indeed go forward. 42 to nil. Six converted tries. Peerless goal kicking. St. Peter's today, a magnificent day for them. Eight from eight. In the A1 First 15 competition in Auckland. Gisborne boys, this Saturday, I ask a cup challenge against the Hamilton boys. Four time defending champions. Won the Super 8 four times in a row. An incredible record. Unmatched, unrivaled in the Super 8. <laughs> Rotorua have been very strong over the years, but Hamilton are something else. Gisborne will make that trip <laughs> next Friday. 62nd minute of play. 42 to nil. The crowd will be wondering and wanting to know now, can the home team get across? Can they get it done? Johnson has shifted the uh, the mark. Just in terms of that, what the referee does, of course, he keeps the uh, distance from sideline to well, from uh, goal line to goal line the same. Just moves them further in the field. Very rarely will a referee move them close to the sideline. 42 to nil. Roman, <laughs> Barmosili, reserve halfback. Looks to be a strong lad. I don't doubt possessed of a very good pass. Uh, Dave Thomas, Principal Bentley should be very pleased with their St. Peter's boys here today. Always moving, moving them again. Well, this is unusual. He moved him once. I wonder if... I know what he's doing, referee Johnson. He's looking for the perfectly dry patch. I'm afraid I... I don't know where he's going to find the perfectly dry patch. Somewhere. Roman. Bamosili. Went off the back there. That was Bentley's move to number eight. It's... Uh, Oh, muddy out there now. Looks a little boggy. St. Peter's still 42 points to nil. Six converted tries. Finding good touch. And what has impressed me today, their basics. They have been very well organised and solid, St. Peter's. We probably overuse that word, well organised, but they are. They know individually, players know where they're meant to be. Look at Carlos, God full of mud. Scratch on the eye, mouthful of mud. No clean player out there. Anybody without any mud on them out there, you need to look sideways at. This boys throw into Bronlin. Beatty, over there to Carlos. It's a tough pass in front of uh, him. Here's uh, Puna Hihi to restart man Puna. He doesn't need a lot of room to wind up. Held in the tackle now, got a pass away. Transfer was made. Beatty goes left side. Gisborne boys still on the attack here. 
That was Hooker Nathaniel Niwa Karaki, a good effort. His boys, still the effort is there. You can see the effort. No shortage of effort. Liam Beatty, right side, just been attacking. Maxwell has it. Maxwell ducks back in field, supported by Carlos E. He trying desperately, and they're penalised. There by referee Johnson. For again, refusing to relinquish the ball. When you are tackled, you get to ground, you must release the ball. Robson Faliafa, I want to see him make a big run before this game is finished. Robson and Josiah. Give the ball to either one of them. Okay, then, if that was a quick throw in. I was going to say, if that was a quick throw in, I don't like the look of it. Throw to come now from Lima Fafita. He's been very accurate. Gisborne boys, another difficult day. Warm day, grand final day, locally. Lima. Okay. Loose ball situation, that line out there. That line out there, comical, it was a little bit of a travesty, but gen generally been very good from these teams. Always going to get the odd rugged throw on a day like this. Dylan Brondon keeping the boys' heads up. Remember, with Nathaniel Hoti, co-captain of Gisborne Boys, not out there. That little bit of encouragement come from Brondon. He's extremely good, positive influence. Dylan. BD out there now for Israel Fox. 42 to nil. 67th minute of play. BD. Okay, Gisborne Boys attacking on the left. Here's... Uh, Carlos now to Puna. Puna swings it to Maxwell. As uh, Cohen Loffler comes off the left foot. Cohen does well, gets over halfway. Tall boy. <coughs> St. Peter's meet them just, uh, just shy of halfway. There's my boys again, fair two. <coughs> At the moment, 42 to nil. Carlos here, he spies a gap. Carlos spies it, flies it, BT away to Nathaniel. Nathaniel caught on the halfway mark. Put down on halfway. Gisborne Boys High School still at halfway. Ball goes loose. Penalty now to Gisborne. They want the ball and to do something with it. They'll have to act quickly. Gisborne Boys tap. Here's Josiah, Josiah. Strong carry, supported by Fetu, supported by Nathaniel. Beatty there with a low pass, a tough one. Seemed to be a slight delay on the pass here in the 68th minute with 42 nil on the board. Sometimes that break between games, if it's a long break, sometimes it can be a good thing. Sometimes that break or the opportunity to take a break comes at an inopportune moment. In terms of Gisborne, I suppose, the more rugby they can get, the better. And of course, St. Peter's come from a very high pressure environment where expectations, community expectations, expectations of old boys is astronomical, one would think. This to be a year in which St. Peter's win it all. When you've won eight in a row, they're a fair bet. Referee Johnson. Sun shower here now. Just cooling off these fans. And support for the Gisborne team has not wavered. Remains strong. You support your first 15 through the good years and the lean years. So far, this has been a relatively quiet year. People have learned a lot about rugby. Penalty, Roman, Cassidy with a tap, they run. Gisborne boys put under pressure and the kick has gone out on the full. 
It's one of the few obvious errors that uh, St. Peter's have made, that line kick going out on the full outside the 22. They haven't made many mistakes. And to be honest, this performance has been a good, strong performance by St. Peter's. Doubt the coaches will pull it apart and say he didn't do this and didn't do that, but overall, been very good. Forty-two points to nil. And Gisborne boys have it. Charlie Bent. Good play by Bent. I think he's had a very good game. Gisborne boys having to make tackles at halfway. St. Peter's have dominated possession. Not always field position, second half. Big guy Nick Malifa. Enormous target, obviously. St. Peter's. Still keen, enthusiastic, still enthusiastic. You've got to have that. And you can't fake it. Josiah Tupovia. A moment ago you saw him, and we haven't seen so much of him with the ball in hand. It's a Nick Malifa. Gisborne boys, are they allowing the ball to be released? Now there, the ruling from referee Johnson is that the ball is not released. Liam Beattie taps the ball, runs. Punahi there with that big step, that funny-looking step. Puna was tackled, got up, went again. That's legitimate. Find support. Beatty now, good front foot ball for Gisborne boys. They haven't had so much front foot ball. Gisborne boys, that was a good tackle by Josh Smith. Howdy doody. No big pardons. 42 to nil. 72nd minute, that's uh, Fetu McGee again. He's got a good work rate for a big guy. Hard working big man, Fetu McGee. 42 to nil. Carlos, the magic of Carlos. Carlos, he he, trying to go through the line. Did he release? Okay, now they receive a penalty, St. Peter's. Here in the 72nd minute of play, Carlos he he has thrown everything he has at it. And unfortunately, so far, their defence, St. Peter's, has been impenetrable. We've all known highs and lows over the years. I can remember sitting here it's Fetu McGee. Recovers well there, McGee. Man, he's played, he's played skillfully too, McGee. Not just powerfully, but with skill. It's Maxwell, supported by Cohen Loeffler. Gets in, does some hard work. Good driving play by Cohen over the top. Beating out of McGee. Josiah Kiaho. One-way traffic with Josiah. Going hard. Oh, no, and he's put it down there. Punahi, he'd be furious with himself. He really would be furious with himself. Guys, try that hard. Now, as I was as I was saying before, we've all had good days and bad days. I can remember sitting here on these bleachers in 1994, watching Gisborne boys play St. Peter's and score 14 tries for 82 to nil back in 1994. Rare will be the occasion anywhere now that. St. Peter's are going to be flattened by 82 points to nil. Twenty-eight years. My God. 74th minute of play. I don't doubt that uh, St. Peter's have played within themselves to a degree, but they've still played very good rugby. against a team that has not given up and never will give up. This Dwayne Hee coach team. Bent, who's moved to number eight, as I said before. Roman got a kick in. In good position there, uh, King Maxwell. He can beat just about anybody one-on-one. -on -one. This is Cohen trying to get off the sideline. Tight ropes the sideline. Nice pass. Braith Ingram got a good one from Cohen. Slipped on the turf, got up. He's in touch. Is he in touch? Braith Ingram's in touch. Cohen Loeffler. King Maxwell. See, that, that's one of the things that fascinates me about this crowd. They, they can invent, they can create. They have shown once or twice, they've moved the ball to the side rather than try and thrash the ball up the middle against St. Peter's, and they have looked dangerous. Maxwell has looked hell of a dangerous. And Cohen has looked more dangerous for his help. Guys can cook up some moves together. St. Peter's have the ball. 
One of their lads appeared to lose his footing. Strong. Again, we've seen some genuinely great teams over, over the years here. We've seen some great Gisborne Boys High School teams. This is certainly one of the better St. Peter's teams. King Maxwell through the middle, put down to the ground with a good tackle, good hard tackle, and good on referee Johnson for not blowing it up. There was nothing wrong with it. It was very physical play, but it was very clean and nothing wrong with it. Beatty, Beatty, nice pass. He's going to get better, the young halfback. Just wants for experience. More game opportunities, and Puna there cleverly. You know, that's the second time Puna has done that. He stung St. Peter's. They've made the tackle, they've released. He's got up and played it again, Dylan Bronlin. Dylan Bronlin to ground, trying to wriggle. Wriggling there, Bronlin, the wriggling Bronlin. Got a release. Oh, well, look at that there. Carlos taps and runs. This is now King Maxwell, who's posed the greatest threat there, although King, ideally, you don't want him running up at these big boppers from uh, St. Peter's. Bit tough if he's got that job as well. That's Braith Ingram. He's valiant. Brave, purposeful. Gisborne boys playing hard-working rugby here. Want a try. Want one. Kick across field by Carlos. Right foot kick and Gisborne boys are going to score. And I'll tell you what, that wonderful try made by Carlos Ihi with a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous kick. So accurate. We can get up there on our try scorer. Man, did they do well there. Gisborne boys a try. 42 to 5. And Isaiah Fox in 22. Moment for the Gisborne team here to say that they scored a try. And as I, as I think I made the point earlier, they have looked dangerous from time to time. But they haven't been able to apply and maintain pressure on St. Peter's in the long term. Seen fleetingly glimpses of that. It was a lovely kick, a brilliant catch. <coughs> Isaiah Fox with the try. Carlos Ihi, the conversion attempt to come here in the 77th minute. Mark Johnson, referee Johnson's had a good game. No cards have had to be issued. You know the reason no cards have had to be issued? Because the discipline of the teams and the excellent spirit which have played the game, it hasn't been necessary. Very good game of rugby, well controlled. 42 points to five. Carlos here to take the shot. He'll want to make this. You want to take something away from this game, more than a try. A kick for the captain, the game day captain. A little wide. And that's the end of the game. So, after 78 minutes of very good rugby, the best team in Auckland, one of the best teams in the country, St. Peter's with eight from eight in the A1 comp, have beaten St. Gisborne Boys High School here, 42 points to five. Last try scored by Gisborne Boys, Isaiah Fox. Conversion attempt was taken by Carlos Ihi, who stepped up as captain proper today. Unsuccessful with the conversion attempt but it was tough, tough rugby out there against a really good outfit. Very professional, slick, and well-trained. And without a hint of arrogance or anything like that, they're a credit, St. Peter's. 42-0 over Gisborne boys. Forty-two points to five. Forty-two points to five over Gisborne Boys High School. It is a, a tough one to swallow, but when you're playing the best, and these guys are some of the best opposition around, that's going to happen. Charlie Bent had a good game. I wonder if he'll be their most valuable player. And King Maxwell, every team in the country, they should have their eyes on him because he can sting you. Didn't get a chance to today, but he's a player of the future. 42 points to five. 